up Canes fans, Peter Ariz here with CanesInsight.com bringing you today's edition of the Canes Insight Daily Podcast brought to you by Anajar and Levine Accident Attorneys. Have a very special guest for today's show, Amari Wallace, recent Hurricanes commitment out of Miami Central High School safety. This is a big time pickup for the Canes, committed back in June. He's a big part of this class already doing a lot of work recruiting wise, as he tells me in the interview, and this guy's a ball player, can play nickel corner, can play safety, an absolute ball hawk, swarms all over the field, has played and started at Miami Central since a 14-year-old freshman, which is really unheard of at that program. Really, really special accomplishment for him. And again, I really think Miami is getting a special one here. Uh, He's going to be enrolling in January, as he also let us know in the interview And this is a big defensive back class for the Hurricanes, potentially. Obviously, Hilton Drake Stubbs also committed at safety. Chris Ewald out of Shamanon Madonna. Tim Merritt out of Alabama. And, of course, the Canes hot on the trail of number one corner in the nation, DJ Pickett. Jabori Antoine as well out of Louisiana, who was previously committed to LSU. Can the Canes snag both of these guys and get up into that top five of the rankings? We will see. But Amari Wallace is a great building block for this class. Again, a guy locally you just have to get. His teammate Ezekiel Marcelin at Miami Central also joining the fold. So the Hurricanes continuing that pipeline going, of course, Ruben Bain, Wesley DeSanth, a part of getting that going here in recent years and need to continue to do that lockdown, one of the top programs in the country. Before we get to that interview, though, wanted to remind you all about the event happening Tomorrow at Canes, where this Saturday, the Malanoa brothers will be in store for a signing event, meet and greet, and all charities, all proceeds go to the Ronald McDonald's house charities, as you see here. But if you're looking for the real deal here on top of meeting the Malanoa brothers, and of course, again, proceeds going to the Ronald McDonald's house charities, if you buy a ticket for this event, there will be a huge sale limited to ticket buyers, 40 to 60% off Kane's apparel, headwear, and footwear, over 900 items here at Kane's Wear. So, man, what a deal that is. And you get to meet two great players, two great representatives of the University of Miami. Guys are going to be a couple future pros here, but excited about what they're going to do for the Hurricanes this season. Again, great guys. We've had a chance to talk to them here on the Canes Insight podcast as well. So go support this event. Go support the Mount Owen Brothers at Canes Wear up in Davie. Go buy your ticket online. You see the QR code there as well. But coming up next here on the Canes Insight Daily Podcast, Amari Wallace joins the show. All right, Canes fans, very excited to be joined right now on the Canes Insight Podcast by a big time commitment for the Hurricanes. Amari Wallace committed just a little under a month ago to Miami, officially here, product of Miami Central, one of the top programs in the entire country. Amari, man, welcome to the show today. Appreciate you joining us. And you know, a lot of the Canes fans excited to get to know you a little bit today. How you doing? I'm doing good. So I wanna just start off, man. Like I said, you, you committed back June 20th here. Walk me through kind of your main factors in that decision to, to come to Miami. Um, for what I mean, I mean, for what I say, um, the reason me coming to Miami, I just feel as that like it's nothing like home. Um, the communication that me, my mom, my dad, the coaching staff has at Miami, um, Miami is just unbelievable. Um, um, Miami been my um. I've been a fan for Miami for like a few years, so it's been good. And obviously you mentioned staying home. You mentioned, you know, your family as well. What does it mean to you all and your family really that you're staying home and that they have a chance to see you play, you know, a lot more often than they might have if, if you went elsewhere? I mean, I say like, why not stay home? You feel me? So, yeah, so I say I stay home because that, I want to, cause I want my family. I want my family. I want my mom, my dad, my brothers, aunties, cousins, everybody watch me at the University of Miami. Watch me stay home. Watch me ball out at the Hall Rock Stadium. 
You mentioned your relationship with the coaching staff, your family's relationship with them. Uh, talk a little bit about that. Coach Coach Chavis Jackson uh, obviously has been, you know, a part of the recruitment um, and others. Coach Cristobal, Coach Gidry. So just get into your relationship with them a little bit and, and kind of where you felt comfortable with them. Um, I felt comfortable with them because they've been they've been um, they've been recruiting me since I was in the tenth grade. No. They've been recruiting me. They've been asking about me. They had things about me written when I was a freshman, and they recruited me going into my 12th grade year. So the reason why I say that our communication and why I love the coaches so much is because that they know how to keep in touch with you. They know how to pop up on you. They came to the school a couple of times, see me. They had seen me. We would we had put me out of class and um and different stuff like that. And me like. And me for I say I like I just know like the defensive scheme and me and Coach Griggs, we've been talking, we've been talking more than football, talking about life. And me and Coach Cristobal, I say that like he just like a real person. He keep it real with you no matter what. Now you see we got the huddle film playing here a little bit. I want to get into your game. Obviously, your seven on seven coach, uh, Coach Duasso helped set this up and and He's always raved about your ball skills and, and your versatility on the field. So talk to me a little bit about what you feel like you bring to the field every time you play. And we see it here against the best competition week in, week out uh, in South Florida. I mean, for what I say, uh, for what I say um, each game, it, um, it don't matter if it's 7 or 7 tackle football. I just always trying to give the game 100. I try to get a game 110%. And for what I say, like, I always try to stay focused. Always don't try to be zoned out. It could be a big game. It could be a little game. I just always try to stay focused and be tuned in to the game. Who are some defensive backs that you watch and maybe, you know, watch film on, kind of look up to, try to take things from the game? Because I know, listen, you want to be your own, your own player. You want to make your own mark. But who are some guys maybe at the next level that you say, man, I, I really like this about his game. I like that about his game and, and try to bring it out there on the field yourself. I mean, for I say, I say, um, Ed Reed and I say Cam Kitchens because they wasn't the biggest and they rose to the strongest, but what they had inside, they had heart. So no matter what they go fight. So for I say, um, those two I um, looked up to and, those who that like I see and both of them have went to Miami. So they had good ball skills. They knew how to tackle. They knew how to hit. And, and they um and they and, and um, they know how to cover. Listen, there there's not not too many better than those two right there. Obviously Ed Reed, Hall of Famer, you know, best of his best of his generation, maybe the best of all time at that free safety spot. And then Cam Kitchens, a guy, listen, I know he's a Northwestern guy, so we, we, <laughs> I, know, I know that might be a little tough for you to to admit there, but obviously a hurricane, an all-American. Have you had a chance to connect with Cam at all? I, I know that obviously there's that connection with the with the the raw team. Yeah, me and Cam. Cam had Cam in one of the um seven of sevens at um raw. And me and Cam, we was talking and he asked me about the recruitment. And we were just talking just about football, how like different things is, how to cover a guy, how to read a guy hip, and just how to just be how just like just, he would tell me how to catch more picks and then just try to get past the fact I'll get like a big play. So me and Cam did talk. Your goals at Miami Central this season, obviously you guys have one of the top teams in the country as it seems like you always do. And you've you know already won at the highest level there. You've you put up a bunch of numbers, but what would you say your goals are this season how do you guys stay motivated to stay on top knowing that you know you've you won it before but you still want more um our team like our team right now like we are family we all like we all like we all mess with each other it's more, almost like it's almost like we brothers i see them seven o'clock in the morning i leave with them seven o'clock at night so i'm with them all day and my goal for the season is try to get my team back to a national state championship for this year now keeping on the miami central theme here obviously there's a couple guys on you know on the roster of miami ruben bain wesley basant to name a couple there and then guys like sabbath joseph on the on the the coaching staff as well 
So what sort of advice, you know, when you have a chance to connect with those guys, do they give you about getting ready for the next level? Um, so I say Ruben Bang, um, Wesley was saying, Coach Sab, all those guys just tell me it's different at the next level. You all got to come in with the um, mentality of just being a dog. You got to be in there, be, you got to try to go in there, be a dog, be 10 toes down, just whatever, what they give you, try to just work and everything will pay up um, at the rest. Let's talk a little bit about, about Coach Jube, man, and some of your other coaches there at, at Miami Central. Everyone sees the clips on social media, the Instagram and all that, and it seems like a great coach to play for. But, it, you know, in your own words, talk about what they've meant to you and, and your development. Coach Jube, well, um, what's, so, um, what's so funny about that? Coach Jube had me when I was 14. Okay. I was playing – JV, I for I don't I ain't never played a JV game, but I practiced for JV for two weeks. He pulled me out the gate. He told me to come guard two of his best players, guarded them, and ever since, Coach Jew been with me ever since. And he always believed in me, and he always had his trust inside me. You man, you must you must have not been too happy in those couple of weeks practicing JV. <laughs> nah, well, was nah, not well, nah. It wasn't it wasn't even that because I know I had to develop. So because. I was working out with the varsity, but when I was time with JP, I go to JP practice. But I ended up going to J um I um I ended up going to varsity. Started no, I started Bishop Gorman game when I had guarded Zachary Branch. Um, that was my first start, and ever since then, in ninth grade, a fourteen year old starting at Miami Central High School, true freshman. Yeah, no, I remember Coach Shawaso said that. I mean, it's it's making history there, which is crazy at, at, at such a program uh, like that. And you know, a couple more things before I let you go here, Amari. Uh, the seven on seven, obviously we mentioned a couple of times you play with Raw and you got a chance to play with a, you know, a bunch of other guys, not only locally, but across the, you know, across the country. What's that experience been like for you? Obviously you're going into your senior year now, so seven on seven is pretty much done now. But the last, you know, year plus that you've had, the chance to play with them. What's that? What's that been like? Um, for what I say, it's good to travel with um kids. You don't know kids you see from across um across the um across the country. It's just that it's cool because more it's more like you really meeting kids that you never seen day in your life. You heard about them, but you never seen them. But it's good that seven on seven make you go travel around the world. You meet new kids. You play with different kids, and just like. See how it is in their world. See how it is in their city. So it's good to play with kids for out of like the country, stuff like that. Yeah, you get to see it up close. Sometimes I'm sure you're watching some of this film. You're like, how's that guy ranked so high? You know, I look, you look look at some guys and say he should be ranked higher and all, but you get to see it really uh, face to face in a lot of these tournaments. So I think that's for the fans. That's cool to see you guys line up like that at that level. Um, talking about this recruiting class a little bit, man. We'll, what are you doing in terms of like reaching out to other guys? Obviously, uh, Drake Stubbs, Hilton Drake Stubbs just committed it also at that safety spot. So he's another recent guy there. Obviously, they're working hard to get some other guys in the defensive back spot. So what's your message to anyone that is interested in Miami? And, and are you kind of doing some recruiting out there right now? Uh, um, me and Drake, we go way back when seven season time started. Uh, I was talking to Drake when he was familiar coming to USC. And I was telling him, like, you're not going to find nowhere like Miami. And then I told him just like this, and I could tell any recruit like this, tell me what coach you know on official day and when you go out and you go to the facility, stuff like that, what coach you know who start, I mean, who throw a barbecue at his own house, a house where he lay his head at, a house where – him, his wife, his kids is living there. And I say, I never seen that day in my life. And I can tell any recruit that that is big and that's real because that man lived there and you don't know what type of people you bring into your environment. But for him to bring the recruits and for him to bring a lot of people to his house and to I like that just show his love for um, Miami University. The University yeah, of Miami. man, it seems like seems like the the, the family atmosphere definitely comes across to you guys all in, in the recruiting process, which is 
you know, such a big thing here. And, and this would be my last question for you. What's your message to the Canes fans listening to this show right now? Um, Cause obviously you, you being a local guy, man, you're always going to get a little, little extra love, man. They're, the fans, they, they love all their Canes, but it means a little bit more when a guy like you stays home. So what's your message to them? My message to University of Miami fans is that for what I for what I say, my message for you, the um, University of Miami is when I when when I come in, I'm gonna give them all. When I come in, I will be there, and when I come in, I'm gonna be a dog. And what y'all see on my high school film, I'm gonna see a way lot of more when I come to the University of Miami. Hey, and that and that's that's all they can ask for, man. So very excited about you. Uh, coming up here to the University of Miami. Are you a January enrollee? Are you going to be an early early guy yeah. here? Yeah, early enrollment. All right. So we got – it's it's July 11th now as we record this. you got just under six months until you're on campus. Amari, best of luck this season at Central. Re really appreciate your time today once again. Thank you. I appreciate you. This is insight to the Canes, and you know we ain't playing no games. Joaquin said dominate, so that's what we do. Home of the legends and seventh floor crew. Down in Miami where hurricanes brew. You here for the rumors, we bring you the news. Cause it's all about the you. And nobody do it like Canes in sight. 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 Canes in sight